Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us here in Fresno, California. I want to first acknowledge the people who are standing with me who will speak as well, and uh, then we'll entertain some questions after we've all had an opportunity to say some remarks. Uh, joining us today uh, to make a, an announcement, a very important announcement for the people here in the Fresno area, all of Central Valley, quite honestly, uh, for the state and for the nation, uh, Joining me are Cindy Quesada with the Sierra Health Foundation, uh, Michelle Gordon with the Fresno County Public Library System, and Josefa Vega with Mi Familia Vota. We're here today because in about a week, families throughout this country are, are going to begin to receive the census form, which every 10 years we are required to fill out. And it's essential that we fill it out because so much depends on knowing who lives where in our country. Let me let this guy go by. So starting March 12th, people will begin to receive in their mailbox the actual census form. And that form is something that every 10 years our families have been filling out. And I'm asking every Californian, and I wish I could do this in every language that people in this country speak, but I can do it in English and I can do it in Spanish. But I'm asking every Californian to please fill out that form. When that census form arrives, please fill it out. And this year you can actually fill it out online as well. Why is it so important that you fill out that census form? Well, if you care about the schools that your children attend, if you care about having streets that aren't filled with potholes, if you care about having the resources to pay for the police that we need, the firefighters and first responders we count on, if you hope that we'll have public libraries and vehicles like this that can actually be available to our families and to our children, then you have to fill out the census form. What happens if you don't fill out the census form? Well, the city of Fresno will get less money for the public libraries, and maybe they won't be able to fund this mobile library center as they have now. Your kids may go to schools that are more crowded with more kids because they get less funding. Your streets may not be paved as often because the city will not have the funds to repair the streets. The federal government takes the taxpayer money that you pay to the federal government every year, and then they redistribute it back to the states, to the communities that pay those taxes. But the way they know how to re redistribute that money is based principally on the information that's been collected through the census. That's how we determine how many people live in the city of Fresno, how many people there are in the state of California. How many people then should have money sent back to their town or their state because they pay taxes to repair the roads, to make our schools better, to have these mobile library centers? But if you don't send back your census form, you won't count. And those tax dollars that you, you paid when you paid your taxes won't come back to your community because the government won't know that you and your family are here. More than $100 billion every year come to California from the federal government based on formulas that are derived using the census numbers. If you choose not to fill out the census form, you are essentially going invisible. And here's where I, I hope this message of filling out the form and of counting is most important because there are many families in our country, certainly in California, and I know here in Fresno, that are afraid that if they fill out the census, they will put themselves in danger. They will risk not being able to come home from work and see their children. Many families in this country are undocumented. Many families don't understand the process. And oftentimes, they prefer not to even engage in filling out the form. Some people who are citizens don't vote, didn't vote last week. Uh, 
I hope that what we're doing is uh, sending a message that will count. Whether you're a citizen and can vote or whether you're someone who lives in Fresno and receives the census form, we need you to count because your kids are counting on you participating. Your neighbors are counting on you to participate. And quite honestly, your community here in Fresno, your firefighters, your police officers, your teachers, your librarians, they're counting on you to participate so that we can get back the money that you paid to the federal government in taxes back into the communities and into the communities in the right amount. But if you're not counted, we get less money. We may also lose representation in Congress in the House of Representatives because how we determine how many state representatives, congressmen and congresswomen, a state gets is based off of the U.S. Census and the people that fill out that form. And so I'm hoping that each and every one of you who reside here in the Central Valley and certainly here in the city of Fresno will, will do not just your children a, a big favor, but all of your community neighbors a big service in filling out the census form. Your information is private. That information the Census Bureau does not share with other federal agencies, including ICE and Border Patrol. That information is not shared with any particular names. You're not being asked to give uh, that information to anybody else. That is private. In the history of this country of over 240 years, the Census Bureau has never been found to have violated the law and shared that information inappropriately with any federal agency or anyone else. And so while there may be some people who are concerned, I'm asking you, do what is right for your kids and for our communities. Make yourself count. Fill out the census form. Uh, I'm going to say just a couple of quick words in Spanish, then I'm going to turn it over to Cindy Quesada for her remarks. Hoy tenemos un anuncio sumamente importante. Porque si usted valora el futuro de sus hijos, si usted valora tener un vecindario seguro, sin crimen, si usted valora tener ese bombero llegar cuando es emergencia a su casa, si usted valora tener acceso a la biblioteca de, de Fresno y los servicios para usted y, sus, y su familia y sus hijos, entonces nos tiene que hacer un favor. Tiene que rellenar la forma del censo cuando llega a su casa. Esa forma es, sin duda, una de las formas más importantes que podemos llenar porque con esa forma determinan, determinamos cuántos recursos tiene nuestra comunidad para tener algo como esta biblioteca móvil para tener la policía protegiéndonos para tener los bomberos listos para proteger nuestro hogar para tener mejores escuelas porque sin el dinero que usted paga en sus impuestos Si se queda en Washington, D.C., no regresa aquí a Fresno, es porque usted y sus vecinos no llenaron la forma del censo que le indica el gobierno federal cuánta gente vive aquí en Fresno y cuánto de ese dinero debería de regresar a esta comunidad de Fresno. Es sumamente, sumamente importante que nuestra comunidad participe. Y yo sé que para muchos en estos días hay miedo de rellenar formas oficiales de brindar información personal de uno y sus familiares. No hay confianza de que uno va a tener seguridad, de que va a poder regresar a su hogar en paz. Yo sé que muchos tienen temor de eso, pero les suplico que, por favor, entiendan que la forma del censo es una forma privada que por más de 240 años el gobierno federal ha respetado. Esa información que pone usted en esa forma no se puede compartir con otra agencia federal en, en lo personal. Esa información es solo para el censo. Y por medio de esa forma y esa información que toda la gente de este país le manda al gobierno al censo, de allí entonces las fórmulas para 
mandar el dinero que han recibido, que ha recibido el gobierno por medio de sus, de sus impuestos, regresa a sus comunidades. Así que si usted no llena esa forma, usted es invisible y usted no cuenta en cuanto a recibir los dineros que pagaron ustedes en sus impuestos aquí a su universidad, a, a su comunidad, para ayudarle a sus hijos en las escuelas, a, a nuestros vecindarios, para quedar, eh, estar más seguros. Así que, por favor, hagan eso el, fa el favor de rellenar la forma del censo cuando llega a su hogar. Y si necesitan ayuda, hay muchas, muchos que estamos listos para ayudar. Hay mucha información que se puede uh, brindar y estamos aquí todos listos para ayudar y tal vez uh, este, darles información sobre el, el internet y por medio de números de teléfono para que tengan más información si la necesitan. Con eso quiero darle el micrófono ahora a Cindy Quesada, quien es del Sierra Health Foundation. I'm going to turn now the microphone over to Cindy Quesada with the Sierra Health Foundation. Um, so, on behalf of the Sierra Health Foundation and the center at the Sierra Health Foundation, we would like to thank Attorney General Becerra for spending time in Fresno to highlight the importance of, of getting everyone counted in, in Fresno, in, in Fresno County. Um, the 2020 census happens to be one of our organizational priorities, and the reason for this is because it undergirds the six priority areas of the San Joaquin Valley Health Fund, which are immigration, health, housing, education, environmental justice, and land use, many of the topics that the Attorney General um, addressed. And because of this uh, intersectionality of these priority areas, we made early census investments starting in 2018, doing some studies on the relationship between housing and census participation, as well as immigrant attitudes and perceptions towards the census. And these studies really laid the groundwork for this massive undertaking that we're now currently undergoing with respect to, to the census. Um, we have raised nearly $6 million in census funding that has been awarded to over 60 community-based organizations across the San Joaquin Valley. About 25 of those are in Fresno County. Um, our strategy is really taking a hands-on grassroots approach. And it was designed by our partners and is based on their years of experience working directly with hard-to-count communities. It is founded on their expertise in, in, serv in serving organizing, mobilizing, and empowering hard-to-count communities around a variety of issues ranging from health access to clean water to voter registration. Um, and this strategy places um, uh, extreme importance on face-to-face -face interactions, talking through concerns uh, of the community, and the key role that community members can play in spreading the word among their um, social networks. So it really is relying on these base building tools that will be necessary to motivate hard to count populations to participate in the largest civic action that takes place in the United States. Um, our outreach approach um, has a variety of components. The first one really is to go where people are. So this could take uh, place you know, in the form of canvassers talking directly to individuals about the census at their doors or over the phone, or outreach workers going to places where hard to count communities can be found, like flea markets, um, barber shops, bus stops, nail salons, places of worship, um, cultural and family events. Secondly, we are not just disseminating information, we are activating community because through house meetings and town halls and community chats, participants are encouraged to sign up um, to go on canvassing walks in their neighborhoods, so they'll be knocking on the doors of their neighbors, um, to phone bank, uh, to distribute and collect census pledge cards amongst their family, friends, and coworkers. So in essence, they are becoming census ambassadors um, and are sparking a multiplier effect that will significantly expand our outreach capacity. Third, we are util utilizing innovative approaches to engage hard-to-count communities. 
For example, we have a community theater group that's doing um, pop-up census skits at, throughout various locations where they role play um, discussing decision making around uh, census participation, addressing the questions and doubts that we hear about you know, from the community. Uh, we have also developed census jingles and songs with very catchy lyrics that are encouraging people to not just participate in the census, but to spread the word. Um, as well, we're having census-themed mural painting block parties in hard-to-count areas where residents will be able to join in the, in the arts activities. Um, we're also working with DJs to bring census messaging to family parties and, and public events and with food vendors to act as mobile billboards. So through all these activities that I just mentioned, we'll be wearing this blue vest that I, that I have on um, right now. And we're using this blue vest as an identifier so that the community knows that we're, commu that we're community outreach workers that are raising awareness about the census and we are, we are trusted messengers. Um, lastly, uh, an extremely important part of our strategy is in offering a helping hand. And what I mean by this is that we are ready to assist um, hard to count communities in filling out the census form. Um, you know, we, we will have tablets available to them. Uh, we'll be, uh, you know, we have a, a variety of partners who speak uh, many different languages and can help with respect to translation. Um, we can help with utilizing different types of, of computer devices or any other needs that, um, that a person may encounter in order to successfully fill out the census form. Um, so in summary, our strategy is really you know, funding a, a lot of organizations throughout the San Joaquin Valley and uh, with a focus that, you know, a lot of emphasis on Fresno uh, County. Um, to provide this hands-on, high-touch, uh, linguistically and culturally appropriate census outreach to our diverse, hard-to-count communities. Um, and this strategy is really revolving around civic participation, community le leadership development, and the building of community power and regional voice. Um, so once more, um, I would, we would like to thank Attorney General Becerra for organizing this uh, this press conference and, and really elevating the, the issue of, of the census. And next, I would like to introduce Michelle Gordon from the Fresno County Public Library. Um, hi. Um, I also would like to thank the Attorney General for coming down to Fresno um, and holding this press conference about the census. Um, the Fresno County Public Library has been involved with um, partnering with both the County Complete Count Committee and the Regional Complete Count Committee for about two years now. Um, nearly all of our 30 plus branches uh, are going to have a computer terminal that is dedicated just to census responses. Uh, so you'll be able to walk into almost any library branch and just walk up to a computer and enter your census information. Um, all of our computer terminals are also going to have um, a shortcut to the census website, so we're going to make it really easy to access. Um, and you'll be able to receive computer assistance also from some of the library staff, so if you're not really familiar with computers, we can help you with that. The census efforts in Fresno County are really concentrating on our hard-to-count populations. Um, it's really important that everybody gets counted, and the library definitely wants to help with that um, effort. And the great thing about the public library is that we come into contact with every range of the hard to count populations in Fresno County. Um, and there's usually a library pretty close to most of the census tracts that are hard to count. Uh, additionally, we have an entire outreach department that, is, uh, that spends all of our time going out into the community, bringing the library to places that may not be familiar with what we offer in services. And part of that, is our Digibus, um, which is a mobile computer classroom. It has 12 computer workstations, it has free Wi-Fi, um, and we are taking this vehicle to several community events over the next four to six weeks to help with census response. So you'll see us at places like the EOC Spring event at the Big Fresno Fair coming up on March 21st. You'll see us at uh, a, a Univision event in April. So when you see the bus, know that you are welcome to come on, spend 
you know, 10, 15 minutes, sit down at one of our computers and enter all of your census responses to make sure that you are counted. Um, you'll see us all over any event that you see us at, you're more than welcome to come on board and get counted. Uh, the 2020 census, it only happens once every 10 years. Take 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes out of your day and make sure that you are counted. Um, I, that's it for me. I'm gonna turn it over to Jose Vega from Mi Familia Vota. <laughs> So hi all, I would like to begin with kind of an anecdote. Um, Mi Familia Bota works with schools and in one of our schools recently in a youth program meeting, um, I encountered a biology book that I used in 2007. So this is the class of 2021. <laughs> so please keep that in mind that this, this is what um, the census funding can impact. Um, this impacts education like uh, the Attorney General had mentioned and Cindy, this, this impacts the public services and access that um, our communities are able to participate in and experience. Um, and also it's, it's imperative that we as uh, community-based organizations and nonprofits really elevate the voices of, of those who are impacted by this and share that information and, and provide that educational aspect for them because that is something that often gets lost, especially with what occurred surrounding the citizenship question that produced such a chilling effect, especially among our community. Mi Familia Vota serves the Latinx community, so that obviously includes folks who may be undocumented, permanent residents, um, citizens, as well as folks who receive DACA and other um, TPS and other services or other statuses. Um, among that, even among our um, permanent residents who are as some of you may know, that means a green card holder. Some of those folks, again, were still expressing the same anxieties and the same fear that those who are undocumented experience. So it is of utmost importance to just encourage them and, and allow them to understand that this information will not be shared with Immigration and Customs Enforcement. It will not be shared with other um, aspects of the the um, USCIS kind of immigration machine and to understand that this will benefit our communities. And as uh, Cindy mentioned as well, here in Region 6, we are one of the most undercounted um, communities. So this, in, it, again, it impacts our schools. If you look around you and you look at the, the services and the, the things that we're lacking in Parlier, there's a, a high school whose uh, water has been shut off due to uh, lead, uh, the presence of lead. So this, this is, of utmost importance because this impacts infrastructure, this impacts so many things that I, um, we experience every day. So it's not this isolated um, survey that we never see the impact of. It, it's something we encounter every day. And I also wanna speak to the, the simplicity of it and understanding that it is now um, being distributed first online and that does kind of pose a, um, a barrier for a lot of folks here in in Region 6 who may lack digital literacy or access. So it is it's so important that the library is uh, promoting this and, and offering this. But this also has to do with the limited funding that the census has allocated to the uh, 2020 census compared to the 2010 census. And again, this is why I call on community members, those who are in the know, as well as um, nonprofits to inform the public, inform your friends, neighbors, family, everyone, to please participate in this because who it impacts most are our most vulnerable. So please keep that in mind and let's get counted. And I would like to turn it back over to um, Mr. Becerra. Thank you. Oh, claro. Pues, jo, uh, me llamo Josefa Vega de Mi Familia Bota, estoy aquí porque queremos que todos participan en el censo, porque eso, eso afecta este, nuestras comunidades, porque impacta a los uh, servicios públicos, nuestras escuelas, hospitales y cosas así. Eso, y es tan importante que to, todos um, están contados, porque si, si nosotros falta esos fondos y este... El, el dinero que, que llega a nuestras escuelas y servicios públicos, ¿quién afecta? Uh, eso este, afecta a nosotros, todos de, de nuestros miembros de nuestras comunidades y por eso es tan importante que todos participamos. ¿Sí? 
Ok, pues entonces lo voy a pasar a, a Becerra. Gracias. No, no, no nos vamos. Eh, eh, vamos a estar seguros de contestar cualquier pregunta que tienen. Ok, so uh, I think we're ready for questions. Can I just add one last point before we go to questions? Um, I know a lot of folks are, and as Josefa was mentioned as well, uh, I think actually all of us mentioned that uh, everyone needs to participate. Some people may have more reluct reluctance to participate. Uh, you will know if you're being approached by someone like Cindy who actually has a legitimate purpose in trying to help complete the census form because they will only ask you appropriate questions and they'll only come at appropriate times and only they'll, they'll behave in appropriate ways. What do I mean? No census worker who might come to your door is going to ask that you let them in. No census worker is going to ever ask you to give them your social security number. No census worker will show up at your place after 9 p.m. at night or before 9 a.m. in the morning. They have rules. And so you are not obligated to respond to anyone simply because they try to lead you believe that they may be doing the work of the Census Bureau. You have a right to confirm that. And you have a right to complete the, the form, the census form, in your house by yourself or with the help of the library uh, system and, a, and, a, and a, a location like this uh, Digimobile uh, service that the uh, uh, Fresno County Public Library System has. But you have a right to make sure that you are confident that when you are asking for assistance, it is legitimate official assistance. And so please, uh, we're all out here to make sure that you participate and get counted, that you fill out your form. And we want you to feel confident that you're doing it right and with the help that you deserve.